just how, and I know you can do this with so many different <laughs> synthesizers, but this really, the way that this is set up encourages me to want to make combinations of waves. Like for example, here is a 32 foot triangle with a an eight foot sawtooth with the eight foot sawtooth mixed down a little bit. These combinations are so fruitful, I think is my favorite thing about them. One of the reasons that I'm doing this is because I want to show you, you put a triangle wave on the bottom of any sound and you will mitigate against any concept of quote, weediness. Holy cow, listen to that. That's so big and so huge. It's astounding. I, I just, I know you can do this on a lot of different synthesizers, but I'm overwhelmed with how nicely these oscillators pair with each other. And these are all sounds without filter. These are all extremely usable sounds that you, I'm not even using the filter on. And that says a lot. When you have a synthesizer that you can come up with really cool sounds with the oscillator alone, that is a great synthesizer. Uh, because so many synthesizers, a, a single oscillator synthesizer uh, with two waveform choices can so often just sound like the dullest, least exciting thing. And sometimes when you have two oscillators, each with two oscillator waveform choices, you still don't get this sort of exciting diversity that can be generated with a synthesizer that has two oscillators and the way that these can be combined. Now let's move on to the thing we haven't talked about yet, which is LFO mod of the oscillator. Let's have a listen. So that is about the extent of your LFO mod uh, as far as depth. And 
And it's really great because, okay, you don't have a mod wheel on the synthesizer. You don't have a way to introduce modulation, but you kind of do because the layout of this is so clear and so nice that if you're playing and you want to modulate, for example, LFO mod on oscillator one, you just reach up to the knob. It's it's you know certainly not as convenient as a global modulation controller wheel, but it's certainly really easy. And since you can just whip it back to zero, it's it's fine. In some ways, it's easier to do than a mod wheel with the you know the the taunt or the tent or the you know the thing in the middle. And let's not forget, uh, we're still on the sine wave of the LFO, but we can go into the uh, audio range. You get almost a ring mod sort of sound. And of course, if you back it off, you can just add some uh, breadth to your oscillator sound. So that is cool. Uh, let's have a listen to the saw. I think it's so cute. It's so interesting that uh, the LFO has sign and saw pretty much. Uh, It's such an effect modulation in the 70s. It'll give you a different sort of timbre in that uh, high frequency modulation. Actually, no, it doesn't. Not really. I totally lied to your face. Oh, well. Now let's go on to the super fun thing. It's not really a low frequency oscillation, so it's kind of a uh, misattribution, or I don't know what you would call it. But you have sample and hold on the Yamaha CS15. It's sitting right here in your LFO, and you can apply it, for example, to pitch through the LFO mod section of the VCO1. <laughs> It doesn't have a huge range to it, obviously, so we're not getting super high notes and super low notes. But it is an interesting effect. And you can use it for your sequencer if you don't mind atonal music. And the thing that we haven't talked about is that we can apply these things uh, individually to the two oscillators. So if you want to mix in a highly modulated oscillator with one that is not modulated, uh, you can do that. So, for example, by applying the uh, sine wave to the pitch of oscillator one, but keeping the modulation low, you can just create a sort of detuning chorus effect. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, I have them relatively in tune. So you can create a nice sort of varying uh, detuning effect. And then if you add actual detune to that, it gets even more complex. So by being able to do that, let's add it to both. <laughs> That's so weird. You could definitely use that for some effects. That's really cool. Uh, obviously, we are now in sample and hold, and I'm showing that having the LFO mod amount set to different settings will give you different pitches. <laughs> And you can turn sample and hold up to a ridiculous level because this is an audio range effect and it gets pretty weird. It sounds a little bit like, as it kind of is, a uh, noise modulation of the oscillators. So if you want to in introduce a little bit of variation into the frequency of your oscillator in a subtle way, uh, you can set the LFO to sample and hold, uh, put it at a very high frequency, and then back it off uh, amount-wise in the mod amount. There's without anything. And as we bring it in, you can hear like the frequency becomes unstable. which uh, breaks it up, makes it sound more organic, uh, more acoustic. Uh, and then we can bring in another oscillator that is not being modulated in that way and listen to them together. Hold on a second. Get them both in the same pitch. And you get a random sort of detuning that's taking place. Which is a really, really cool sound. Look at all the things you can do with this oscillator alone. It's stupidly amazing. Uh, yeah, you just have a lot of opportunities uh, by having two oscillators with this amount of functionality, with this mixer setup, and the other things you can do with it, you can create a very wide variety of sounds. Here, let's do something else. Let's put on a square wave and add a whole bunch of pulse width modulation. <laughs> Glitchy sound. I just can't get enough of all the things you can do to create really usable sounds with oscillators alone. I love it.